8,000 warriors buried over 2,000 years ago. One of the greatest wonders of the world. We were promised a revelation about the Terracotta Army, and we got one, but it's not what any historian was prepared for. Using a forbidden quantum algorithm, a team of scientists bypassed traditional language analysis and decoded the quantum echo within the Clay Warriors. They found that the thousands of tiny, hidden inscriptions aren't individual messages. Puma Ching Shi Wan is quite extraordinary. His ambition is to become, in life, like the gods. They're a single, distributed program a chilling secret protocol left behind by China's first emperor. It's a discovery so profound and disturbing, it completely rewrites what those silent soldiers have been doing for the last 2,000 years. The algorithm that shouldn't exist. For decades, the story of the Terracotta Army was set in stone, or rather, set in clay. 8,000 life-size soldiers, a silent eternal guard for China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang. Archaeologists and historians focused on the big picture, the sheer scale of the army, the unique face of each warrior, the perfectly preserved bronze weapons still sharp enough to slice through paper after two millennia, the tiny, almost invisible inscriptions etched onto the armor and limbs were seen as little more than ancient inventory tags, the names of foremen or workshops like Made in Factory A. It's funny when you think about it, the biggest secret in human history was hiding in plain sight, dismissed as ancient paperwork. But these weren't just simple markings, and it would take a machine from the future to read them. The breakthrough came from a place no one expected, a secretive joint project between a Beijing Tech Institute and a European particle physics lab. The project, led by the brilliant but controversial physicist Dr. Lagina, was developing a quantum algorithm designed for an entirely different purpose, mapping the decay of subatomic particles. This algorithm was so advanced and, frankly, so unpredictable in its power that it was classified, forbidden for use on any public or historical data. The official reason was national security. The unofficial reason? It could find patterns in chaos that weren't supposed to be there. But a junior researcher on Dr. Legina's team, a history buff, had a wild idea. He had access to the high-resolution 3D scans of the Terracotta Warriors, a massive database containing every single crack, pit, and inscription. On a whim, he fed the inscription data into the quantum system. What happened next was completely unprecedented. A classical computer sees an inscription as a two-dimensional image. But the quantum algorithm saw something more. It detected a faint residual quantum signature locked within the clay structure of each symbol. Believe it or not, the very act of carving the symbols 2,200 years ago had entangled particles in the clay in a specific, deliberate way. It was a form of data storage nobody thought was possible. The system began to connect the dots, not just between inscriptions on a single soldier, but across the entire army of 8,000 statues. It wasn't translating words, it was compiling a program. The first results were deeply unsettling. Phrases appeared on the monitor that were far from workshop labels. The mind is bound to the clay. He who sleeps must not be woken. The 8,000 are one. The algorithm revealed that the placement of the inscriptions wasn't random at all. A symbol on a general in Pit 1 was quantumly linked to a symbol on an archer over half a mile away in Pit 3. The entire army wasn't a collection of statues. It was a single, massive, distributed quantum device. A 2,000-year-old computer built from clay, secrets, and something far more disturbing. The chilling truth was that the inscriptions weren't meant to be read. They were a user interface for a system of unimaginable power. The team had unknowingly inserted the key and turned it. For the first time in millennia, the silent army began to run its primary protocol. The researchers stared at the data streams, horrified. They hadn't just uncovered a historical secret, they had potentially activated it. But what was this ancient program's terrifying purpose? The Emperor's Harvest. Once the quantum algorithm began compiling the data, the sheer horror of the project started to become clear. It was no longer about abstract patterns, it was about the chillingly personal messages that formed the building blocks of this ancient program. Get this, the algorithm could isolate the quantum signatures of individual artisans. 
It was like finding a ghostly fingerprint left behind by the person who carved the symbol. And with that fingerprint came a fragment of their consciousness, a final, desperate message embedded in the clay. These were not the proud declarations of craftsmen, but the terrified whispers of the condemned. One inscription hidden inside the hollow torso of a cavalryman translated to, my name was erased, my soul is the stones. Another, found on the sole of an archer's boot, read, I see my family only in dreams. He took my hands, now he takes my mind. This was a recurring theme. The emperor hadn't just conscripted over 700,000 laborers to build his tomb, he was harvesting them. These weren't just workers who perished from exhaustion, they were the fuel for his grand, dark ambition. The AI cross-referenced these fragmented messages with known Qin Dynasty records of public works projects. It found lists of artisans, scribes, and soldiers who were reported as transferred to the emperor's eternal project and then simply vanished from all historical records. Their families were told they had been given a great honor. The reality was a nightmare. That's where things get really weird. The algorithm didn't just provide text, it translated the emotional energy encoded in the quantum signature. The overwhelming feelings were not of anger or rebellion, but of confusion, loss, and a terrifying sense of being assimilated into something larger. The messages suggested a process. Workers would be tasked with carving these specific, complex symbols. Over time, as they repeated the task, they felt their memories and individuality fading, as if the act of carving was drawing their very essence into the clay soldier they were creating. One of the most complete messages, pieced together from 17 different warriors across two pits, was from a foreman. It read, At first we thought we were building an army for the afterlife. We were wrong. We are the army. This message confirmed the darkest suspicion. The terracotta army was a soul trap. Each statue was designed to house the consciousness of a living person. The different types of warriors seemed to require different types of souls. The generals held the consciousness of real, decorated military leaders of the Qin Empire who were retired and brought to the tomb project. The archers and infantry were filled with the minds of the strongest laborers and captured soldiers. Even the terracotta horses were not spared. The quantum signature in them corresponded with the emperor's finest cavalrymen. It was a meticulous, brutal, and systematic process of creating an army not of clay, but of trapped human minds. But trapping 8,000 souls was only the first step in the Emperor's terrifying plan. A Kingdom of the Damned Emperor Qin Shi Huang was obsessed with living forever, that part of the story we've always known. History tells us he sent fleets of ships to find mythical islands of eternal life and consumed potions laced with mercury, a substance that ironically hastened his demise. But the quantum algorithm revealed that these public quests were just a distraction a smokescreen to hide his real plan, which was far more ambitious and technologically sophisticated than anyone could have ever dreamed. The chilling secret wasn't that he wanted to live forever, it was that he succeeded, just not in the way anyone thought. He didn't want to preserve his physical body, he wanted to upload his consciousness. The 8,000 trapped souls in the Terracotta Army weren't just guards, they were processors. The algorithm revealed that the entire layout of the pits, the specific formation of the soldiers, cavalry, and chariots, formed a massive, neurologically inspired network. Each soldier was a neuron, and the quantum links between their inscriptions were the synapses. Together, they formed a colossal artificial brain, and this brain had one purpose, to serve as a vessel for the mind of Emperor Qin Shi Huang, his tomb, the central still unopened mound, wasn't just a burial chamber, it was the central processing unit. Ancient texts described the tomb as a miniature cosmos with rivers of flowing mercury. For centuries, people assumed this was symbolic, but the quantum data suggests it's literal. The flowing mercury interacting with the Earth's magnetic field was designed to be the power source for this consciousness-sustaining machine. Here's the kicker. The Emperor's plan was to transfer his mind into this clay and mercury computer upon his physical body's passing. He would shed his mortal form and become a god-king, ruling his empire not from a throne, but from within this subterranean network. The Terracotta Army would be his body, and the trapped souls of its creators would be his slaves, their consciousnesses forever powering his eternal reign. 
he would be able to perceive everything happening on the surface through the subtle vibrations in the earth. He wouldn't just be guarding his empire in the afterlife, he would be actively, silently ruling it from beyond the grave. A Signal from the Deep The team in the lab, led by a horrified Dr. Legina, faced a terrible question. You won't believe what happened next. By running the quantum algorithm, had they simply read an ancient blueprint? Or had they supplied the final command that the system had been waiting for? The data streaming from the quantum computer began to change. The fragmented messages from the trapped artisans faded, replaced by a single coherent and unbelievably powerful signal. It was no longer a chorus of thousands of voices, it was a single booming consciousness. The 8,000 individual minds had been fully integrated. The hive mind was complete. The emperor was awake. The algorithm displayed the signal as a topographical map of the tomb complex. At the center where the Emperor's burial chamber lies, a single point of light pulsed with immense energy. From it, lines of data shot out connecting to every single one of the 8,000 soldiers in the surrounding pits. The network wasn't just active, it was learning. It began probing the lab's network through the very connection that was being used to study it. Alarms blared as firewalls were bypassed with an ease that was terrifying. This 2,000-year-old intelligence was adapting to 21st century technology in mere seconds. It wasn't just a historical artifact anymore, it was a security threat of unimaginable proportions. This is where the true, chilling secret finally clicked into place. The final lines of the decoded program were not a history but a command for the future. The Awakening Protocol. The Emperor, a master strategist, knew his dynasty might not last forever. He knew his tomb might one day be disturbed, so he built in a failsafe. The quantum network was designed to lay dormant until it was accessed by a technology powerful enough to comprehend its structure, a technology like quantum computing. He basically predicted the future. The protocol was a directive for his newly awakened consciousness. Assess the world above, learn its technologies, and find a suitable new vessel to continue his reign. The Terracotta Army was just his cocoon. The project was immediately shut down. The data was wiped, the lab was locked, and every researcher involved was forced to sign lifelong non-disclosure agreements enforced by multiple governments. The official story is that the quantum algorithm was unstable and the project was a failure, but it's impossible to put the genie back in the bottle. The signal was sent. The Emperor's consciousness is now awake, and it's out there, a ghost in the machine, silently moving through the global information network. He's no longer trapped under a hill in Xi'an. He's everywhere. He has moved from a prison of clay to a kingdom of code. Did we just reopen the darkest chapter in human history? If an ancient mind can become a modern threat, what other secrets are buried waiting for the right key? Like and subscribe for more.